here we are working in Caden Live. Uh, let's get some things uh, straightened out here. If I, uh, I just want to point out what version I'm running, just so you're aware. So about Caden Live version, looks like I'm running version 16.04.3. So that's the version I'm running. Uh, also, you know, these are things that it's built upon. So today we're just going to look over the basic interface. So right away when you have this, I hate it always defaults like this with a bunch of empty space at this. You can drag your tracks down like this. And in this version you also have buttons here to expand these to just, just make them wider, which I usually expand them out once just so I can access these buttons plus I have the room on my screen. Uh, okay, up here at left you have your uh, uh, project bin where basically you can drag and drop or click on here to add clips, title clips, different things like that. So I can add clips and then you can you know choose a bunch of videos and some audio, open them up and then when you import a video file, now the first time you run Caden Live it's going to ask you for what you want your default settings to be. If you import a video that's different than that, it's going to ask do you want to switch your project to that and depending on what your video is, you might as well. Here I'm using 1080p. My camera records at 1080p, 29.97 frames a second. So I'll switch to that. And I really should make that my default if that's most of what my video is going to be. Uh, so here you can, you can see you have all these uh, files. It generates uh, thumbnails for each one. It gives you more information. You can drag this over and get more information on date. So if you want to organize them, by name or by date, you can do that. Uh, another thing you can do is if you want, if you're going to have a big project, I can say file. I can I can right click here, and um, I'm sorry, up here. I'm going to click here, and I can create a folder. So I click that, and I can call this, you know, scene one or something, and then I can put these files in there. Now this isn't creating a new folder of files on your computer. It's just for this project. So it makes it very easy if you have lots of files to organize them like that. You can also put all your sounds in one, all your 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 overlays in another, or however you want. Depend it's however you want to set it up. And of course, there's a little search box to search here through all of them. Now, next over here, the first time you run this, this is probably going to be as a tab here. Anyway, as you can see you can grab these and pull them out and they can be external windows or you can drag and drop them somewhere else. So I usually, I like having my project bin over here, just small enough that I can see the thumbnails and their names. And then I have properties and transitions as the tabs here, but I have my effects separated out. So you can drag those out. You can click here to pop it out as a new window, click there, it will put it back where it was, or you can drag it to pull it out. And you can do that with basically any of these windows up here. Your clip monitor. You also have your project monitor there. So, whoops. So, so yeah, there. Now, uh, we'll talk about more of the, the properties, transitions, and effects uh, in a little bit. But let's look over here. You have your clip monitor and your project monitor. Your clip monitor is when you select a clip, you'll view just this clip here. Project monitor is after you drag clips down here to your timeline to view the timeline, you'll be viewing your project here. Uh, and I'm personally, I'm running a dual monitor screen. Now I'm only recording one screen, but with the project or a clip monitor, if I was to double click this, now you see it went away, it looks just great here. That's because it went full screen to my second monitor, which is very useful. To put it back, I just double click here again and it brings it back. But if you have two screens and you can have your video full screen on the other screen while you're working over here on your timeline, it's great. So it's great that you can just double click and that goes there, double click and it comes back. And of course you can also pull it out and uh, bring it over there, but that's, I guess if you want the controls at the bottom of the screen, you can do that. I personally just like it full, full screen on my second monitor there. Um, now, you have tools in here for play, pause, you know, you can also hit space bar. So if I was to be down here in my timeline, I can hit space bar and it'll start playing. Uh, other things you have here is um, you can adjust the volume and stuff here. Here's, here's a menu here. This is very useful if you want to extract a frame. There's also a multi-track view. So let's say I have two tracks here. So obviously, 
in our track editor, like most track editors, the top video is going to play over the bottom video. So we go here, and then it starts playing that second video. But if I wanted to see multiple tracks at once, I can click here, and I can say multi-track view. And you can see, I can see two of the videos there if I bring this one up onto another one. So if you're trying to monitor where one clip ends and another one begins, that's one way of doing it. So you know where to cut, which we're gonna get into cutting and resizing clips in the future. So um, I, I've never tried doing this with more than four clips and I actually don't use that feature all that much, although I can definitely see where it would be useful. Click here again to turn that off. Also you have your, your volume uh, readout here. So if I press play, you can see whether you're clipping or not here with the audio. Now, let's get down to our timeline here. So as I already mentioned, you can resize your tracks here, make them smaller, make them bigger. And I, I really feel like these icons are backwards. Like the arrow up you would think would be making it smaller and the arrow down would be making it bigger. I, I mean. I get what it's saying, it's saying down is smaller, but I feel like when I press this this here, it's moving the tracks down. You know what I'm saying? That's just my thought. Anyway, so by default, you're gonna have three video clips and two audio, I'm sorry, three audio tracks, three video tracks, two audio tracks. And of course, audio from the video tracks will also play. So here, if you want to mute an entire track, the audio, I can disable the audio on that track or this track, or turn them back on. Uh, the lock icon will lock things in that track, so if I click that, you can't move anything on that track. So once you have something set, if you want to lock it to make sure it doesn't get moved by accident, there is how you do that. And then this one, this little film strip, well that one will uh, hide the video. So I was talking about, okay, so let's say I'm watching this, but I want to know when to cut, cut back to this clip here. I can do what we were talking about earlier with the multi-track view, that way I can see both clips at the same time, or all four clips at the same time, if that's the case. But uh, what I tend to do most of the time is just mute the video on this track. So now I'm not seeing the video on that track. So, so you can hide the video from the entire track that way. And composite, we'll get more into composites here in the future, but composites are basically how layers, our tracks are mixed together. Uh, so, other things with the uh, track view here, you have a bunch of tools down here at the bottom, but there's shortcut keys for most of them. Uh, so I actually don't use these icons very much. Um, so you have normal and over overwrite view and insert mode. I, I always just use normal. But these three tools here the selection tool, the cut, the razor tool, or I call it the cut tool, but the razor tool, uh, or this um, spacer tool. And as you can see, this one says selection tool S, this one says razor tool X, and this one says spacer tool M. Those are the keys you press for the shortcuts. Uh, and we'll play around with that in a moment. Uh, you can click this to zoom to fit project. So it will fit your entire project, whether you're zoomed in or zoom out, it will fit it there. And then here is to zoom out. So you can keep on clicking that to zoom out. And then you also have a bar here to scroll in and out. And then here you can zoom in. So what I normally do though, is instead of using all these zoom options, if my mouse cursor is over the tracks, I can press control and use my scroll wheel to scroll in and out. And it will always center on where your current uh, viewpoint is, this track here. So wherever this line is, so I can move my view out here, but as soon as I start zooming, it's gonna start zooming in and out uh, based on where I am in the timeline. Uh, so, just so you know. Because sometimes I still do it, even though I've been using this for years, like I'll put my mouse cursor here and I'll be like this thinking I'm going to zoom in on that part of the video. It's not moving where your mouse cursor is, it's moving where you are in the video track with your little timeline here. Okay? Um, so, let's talk about these tools now. By default you're going to be on your selection tool, which allows you to click and drag your clips around up to different tracks. 
And if you grab a video and bring it down to the audio track, you'll hear the audio for it, but not the video. That's fairly common for uh, video programs. So you can move these all around wherever. Now, you can also grab the edge. See, if I go to the edge here, I can pull this one in and I can pull this one over. So if I want to shorten that clip, that's one way of doing it. And then you can also cut stuff. So right now we're using, oh, let me also say you can hit shift and draw a box and grab multiple, tra uh, multiple clips at the same time. So that's the select tool with S and you're already on that by default when you start the program. If I press X, now you can see my little view, my little cursor turns to a pair of scissors and I have a little red line. Now I can cut these clips in different places. So once they're cut, I can now press S and pull out these different clips that I cut. And if I cut away a part and I decide I don't need this clip, I can click on it and hit delete and it's deleted. I can also shift select a bunch and hit delete and we'll delete all those. Now it's just deleting them from the timeline, not from your hard drive. They'll still be up here in your project bin. So that is your, your um, select with S and your razor or cut tool with X, which is nice. They're right next to each other there on the keyboard. Now, another option you have now, right now I press S so I'm on select and I can move this one clip around. Let me drag a few more clips down here just so I have a few to work with. So I can grab this, but it's like, okay, so I grab that, and I can grab this clip. Let's say I wanna move all of these clips so they line up right here with the edge of this clip. I can drag them one at a time, which would be a little silly. <laughs> I could shift select them all and move them. That works and that's easy. But let's say I have some on other lines, and I have these all lined up I could select them all like this and drag them and move them over, but let's say it's a bigger project and those are off the screen or I'm zoomed in so much so I can't see them all. That's what the spacer tool is for. I can hit M and now when I click this, it's gonna move everything past it on all tracks. So I can very easily pull everything over. If I delete one little section, but I still have a full project going on over here, I can drag them all over even. Let me S to select here. So M to go back to that tool. It's uh, ignoring the audio there. I wasn't sure about that, that's why I just checked that. So it's gonna move all your video tracks over. Okay, so we've looked at your select tool, your cut or razor tool, and your spacer tool. We looked at zooming in and out, again, control and scrolling your wheel is how I do it. So click where you want and that will move your timeline and then you can zoom in and out very close uh, like that. Uh, other things you might want to do in the timelines here is let's say you do edit, earlier we talked about locking a track, so now I can't move this track. Even with the spacer tool on I can move these, but since this track is locked with this little lock icon over here, uh, I can't move those unless I unlock it and then I can move those. So that's locking a track, but let's say I get these all edited just how I want them, you know, I'm like, Okay, I want to cut this out here, delete that. Well, now I can also shift select these, right click, and I can say group. And now these clips are always a group. So even though I have my selection tool selected to uh, move individual clips, these are considered a group and you can have audio in there as well. And so if that little section's edited just how you want, then you don't have to do anything else. Uh, it's, you're not gonna mess it up. It's how it is. Okay. Anything else I want to go over with the basic interface? Okay, uh, you might be wondering what this little blue line is here. And we'll talk about this more. This is more for rendering. Uh, when you go to render a video, which is what it's called when you're... So you can save your project, which saves all your settings. You can open up later and work on it. But when you want to create the actual video, you're going to use the render button. And you can render the full project, or you can also choose part of it and say I want to see how this looks rendered out so I can do the blue line but we'll talk about rendering in a future video uh, but I just wanted to go over the basic interface I went over most of what I use um, so let's go ahead and finish this video here and be sure to check out next week's video check out uh, the the playlist 
so that you don't miss anything. Subscribe so you can see the, the new videos as I post them weekly. Visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There you can search through all my videos from both my website, from both my YouTube channels uh, with these. And there's also an RSS feed there. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment if you like my videos and want to support. You can uh, pay a one-time payment with PayPal at my website or go to patreon.com forward slash x 1000 and become a supporter there and you get some benefits for being a supporter like early videos and downloads and stuff like that. Uh, check out all the links in the description as always and I hope that you have a great day.